Hey there, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. So we're looking at some technique musts this week at DTL and today specifically we're going to look at three musts on the one hand backhand. The first would be the idea of lunging into contact. All right, and this is very unique and I have a one handed backhand very unique to the one handed backhand. It's the idea that that right leg rather than me just thinking about that standard step and hit, I feel like the one handed backhand gets such great extension. My, my dominant arm is in front of my body so my reach is even better than on my forehand side which is also one handed because it's coming from behind me. So when I know that I'm going to get so much extension through the ball, I don't want to get limited on that by only taking kind of the cookie cutter step at it. So the feeling that I love to have that I know that I see with Federer, Favrinka, team, all these guys, they're taking that right leg, that dominant leg and lunging in and getting into that almost squat or, or drop position. You could see how wide my stance is. And when I put all the weight into that front side, it's going to allow or support the racket to get all the extension that I want to feel. So go out if that's something you feel like you don't do very well with your one handed backhand. It's simply about extending that step a little bit farther and sinking in. The other thing I feel like this really helps with is you'll notice with most one handed backhands, the racket gets a little farther under the ball and then the finish goes a little bit higher. So by me dropping my weight farther out and extending lower, it's going to help me get under that tennis ball really nicely. So that's, that's the first must on the one hander is get that, get that lead leg lunging you into contact. The second, and this is so important, I love this idea, is the idea of the non-dominant hand. If you've watched anybody with a one-handed backhand and were not impressed, I would almost guarantee that the role of their non-dominant hand plays a very insignificant role. Where when you watch somebody and you're impressed by a one-handed backhand, all throughout the swing, starting with that unit turn, you're going to see that, that non-dominant hand really supporting that upright position. My right hand which I obviously use as my dominant hand, is very loose on the racket in this position. I want the control with that left hand because that's what can prop it up so nicely for me and we want that nice vertical look at the start of the swing. Okay, once we're there and we start to let go as we start to drop, the, the role of the non-dominant hand is only half complete. You see a player that lets go here and just lets this arm sit against their leg, not that impressive of a backhand. Go out and watch Vavrinka. Where's that left hand going? It's reaching towards the back fence, which to me balances out the idea of what we said with the lunge. What am I trying to get? Huge extension. So if that front leg is really leading me, the racket arm's trying to reach so far out and this non-dominant arm hangs here, I'm likely to stay more compact in the stroke. So you get that great feeling in a one-handed backhand where the non-dominant hand reaches way back and it almost slingshots the racket as far out as it can go. That is a really key idea in the one is the non-dominant hand with regards to prep and then balance and reach back on the finish. Okay, so that's idea number two. The third must on the one handed backhand is a really nice loose grip at the very end of the swing. I think you, you guys would agree if you've watched a lot of one handed backhands, when they finish the stroke, it's so natural. It comes to rest naturally at the top. Players that don't tend to hit it well, you'll see a lot of times they'll lock that right wrist at the end. They're trying to hold the ball to the target and almost block it out there which goes against the nature of really swinging through the one-hander. So in this position high up here, you know, you'll watch Federer, you'll watch Team Vavrinka, 
you know, the butt cap of the racket might very well be facing the opponent at the end of the swing. How can I get to that position if the wrist itself is really locked? It's likely that the racket's just going to sit upright. Even me, I don't know that I actually face the butt cap forward. I might once in a while, but I for sure know that at the very top of my swing when I'm finished with the stroke, that hand is so relaxed up here because that's one of the reasons I switched to the one-handed backhand all these years ago is I wanted that loose, natural feel, and you're going to lose that if you're trying to lock that grip down through contact towards the end of the swing. All right, so there's three real essentials with the one-handed backhand. Lunge into contact, non-dominant hand playing a big role through the entirety of the swing, and then loosen up, come to rest naturally at the end of the stroke. Let's have a look at a few. Yeah, you can see. Really comfortable up there, left hand back. I'm getting that, and I'm, I'm tall, obviously, you guys, so my lunge tends to be pretty exaggerated, but regardless of how tall you are, you knock out those three things. You're gonna start to love the feel of that one-hander, even when you miss a couple, and that's the goal is get a swing that you trust. These musts are about you trusting the process to get the most shots made and, and the most out of each shot, okay? So I hope that was super helpful. That's all I got for you today. Please click like below this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so, as well as check down below me in the description of this video. You'll find the link to three free courses that Mark and I have put together. I think you'll find those super helpful as well. All right, so until next time, be well, and we'll see you soon at Daily Tennis Lessons.